All right, all right. I, I think we're rolling live. But let's give everybody a couple minutes to join in with us here, and, and we will be up and running. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Wednesday is hump day. I don't know if anybody remembers that commercial with the camel from a few years ago. Uh, you know, the camel would walk around and ask everybody what day it is, and they would say hump day. One of my favorite commercials of all time. Whoever wrote that commercial should get some sort of a bonus. Uh, I mean, that, that's got to be one of the, the most memorable commercials of all time, uh, at, at least in my book. Um, but cool, get, getting us rolling here. So uh, if you weren't with us last time, we're, we're trying something a little bit new at Benzinga, which is we're just trying to bring more, more video content throughout the day. I mean, we've seen such a rush of people interested in investing. I mean, investing is not just for the elite anymore. I mean, this is something that everybody is participating in. I and mean, we have got su such a big world of investors out there. We, we publish content all day on Benzinga.com. And we're publishing alerts almost 800 times a day in Benzinga Pro. To, you know, we'll, we'll drop a link for that one in there so you can check that out. Uh, but what people keep telling us is they want more video. They, they want more video content. And so we figured, all right, let, let's just go after it. You know, we've we got some of your favorite Benzinga staffers here. Uh, you know, I, I'm Luke. Um, later today, we're going to be bringing on Neil. Uh, he's going to be doing a stock pitch. You might know Neil from our boot camps. Uh, and then Jason, our CEO over at Benzinga, is taking us uh, through Tesla. We, we've got Tesla reporting earnings imminently just a few hours from now. So, so at around 1230, stay tuned. We're, we're going to be digging into Tesla. Um, but again, we're, we're just trying this. You know, we, we figured, okay. People tell us that they want more video content, so, so we're just going to go ahead and, and give it a go. Um, and, and I'm going to get us started here today with some news. So let, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. The screen is shared. It is Zoomed for Ant, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom that in for all of us. And, and let's look at some of these hot stocks today. Number one on the list, most gaining stock that we have of the day, Snap, Snapchat. This is one that investors had counted out for dead for so long. And look at that, the thing's at almost 40 bucks. Uh, when we did this on Monday, Jason went ahead and shared his live portfolio. I'm not one to be outdone. So, so I'm going to click over to mine. Um, you know, Give me a nod in the chat if you can see my uh, uh, portfolio, you, you're seeing my screen okay. Um, but, but check this out. I, I've got Snap from an average price of 13 bucks. The thing is at almost 40 today, that is my, my big winner of the day. Um, a, a couple notes I'll make. So, so, so the reason why I liked this one initially, you know, investors were concerned because their, their user growth wasn't strong and, and it still isn't strong. I mean, that, that's just a fact of the stock. Um, but, but if you look a little bit deeper into the, the, the part of the business where they make money, which is from advertising to their users, uh, they, they do an incredible job. I mean, I, I've talked to so many advertisers who, who leverage Snapchat. And I mean, these are big brands that I'm talking about who, who have had way more success with Snapchat than, than other platforms. I mean, Facebook is, is sort of the king, king of social advertising. Every, everybody knows that. But, but a lot of advertisers that I talk to have a ton of budget or a ton of success with Snapchat. They're allocating more budget to Snapchat. I mean, when, when the stock was down and trading at, I mean, like, like one or two times revenue, so, somewhere along those lines. That's where I got interested in it. We, we see them out with strong numbers today. I'm clicking back to Benzinga Pro. So we'll take a look at that. Um, Let's look at these numbers from Snapchat. So they said, wow, this is way back. We've got a lot of Snapchat news. All right. So, so they reported EPS of a penny. Analysts had expected a five cent loss. So they reported better than expected EPS results. Uh, and then they reported revenue of $679 million. Uh, versus a $550 million revenue estimate. I mean, that is a huge beat on revenue. But let's whip out the trusty calculator real quick. We got 679 million minus 550 divided by that 550. All right, so, so they beat revenue by 23%. Stocks up 35% off of that. I mean, not many companies are, are gonna deliver that big of a beat. They also had good uh, uh, you know, daily active user growth up 18% on a year over year basis. So, so Snapchat is, is the big winner today. I got lucky with that one. 
uh, up about 200% on the stock, uh, and I'm going to let it ride. So, so I mean, he, here's a point that, that I think is, is important to make, and this is something that we reiterate at, at Benzinga to a lot of people who leverage us for education, which is that traders have such a tendency to sell stocks that they're winning in and to hold on to stocks that they're losing in. And it, it, it should be the exact opposite, right? If, if we're talking about strategies that work or, or quant tactics or, or anything along those lines that work, I mean, something that's been shown over and over and over again in academic research is that momentum does work, right? If, if you did nothing but, but traded stocks on momentum and stopped out of them when that momentum fades, you, you, you win. Historically, over a large number of securities, over a large period of time, you will outperform the market. So, so, you know, what I'm going to do with this snap position is I'm going to keep letting it ride. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to reduce it. I'm going to keep letting it ride, but I'm going to put some stops in, right? So the stock is, is up, you know, 35% today. It's up to 38 bucks. So, so I might put some stops in around $34, right? So uh, I, if the stock continues to run, I continue to take advantage of upside. I let the momentum run. I mean, they got a ton of upgrades from analysts today, so, so that might give it another boost through the rest of the week. Uh, and if that momentum starts to phase, that's when I'll start to take some money off the table, re reduce my cost basis, uh, et cetera. So, so that there's our big winner of the day. And, and then I want to take you guys through a big loser of the day. Uh, it's ticker GSX Tech EDU. Uh, that's Golf Sandy X-Ray. Uh, down 27% on a horrible, horrible, horrible Q3 earnings report. And, and th this is one that I think is a little bit funny in that th this was like a, a, a darling o o of Wall Street for a little while during this COVID period. What, what the company does is they basically do virtual learning in China and, and only in China, right? Virtual K through 12 class forums. They, they also do virtual tutoring in China. Um, you know, here's, you know, I got their website here, you know, their investor site does do a really good job of giving an overview of the company. So if you want to check it out, go over to their investor site. But, but here, here's what I think is, is interesting about this one is, is it was run way up on coronavirus fears, right? Uh, uh, coronavirus is coming. It, it's still here. People are going to be going uh, virtually for school. They're not going to be going in person as much. Uh, so, so that's why everybody loved this stock. But, but, but look at the, the coronavirus cases in China. This, this stock only operates in China, right? That, that's the only place that they're active. And, and trust the data or don't trust the data. I mean, there's China saying that they have, you know, 10 new cases a day, pra practically nothing. Their, their schools are in session. Um, you know, so the stock got hammered. It, it didn't nearly live up to investor expectations. So, so I think the lesson to take away from this one is, is a little bit of, of just knowing your company right? It, it sounds like it's a really hot name, right? They do virtual education. But, but if people were aware that they did virtual education specifically in China and only in China, I, I think it takes away a little bit of the sexiness, especially as we've seen. I mean, China, again, trust the data or don't trust it. I trust it, it at least directionally. Um, but, but China has done a good job managing, managing their COVID cases. There's not as much demand as we expected for virtual education in China. Uh, so, so that's the story there. All right. And, and I, I want to bring somebody else onto the stream. Give me a second here. We, we, we've got Neil from the Benzinga team. Uh, he, he's hanging out with us. So I've got to go ahead and I've got to stop sharing. I apologize. You got to look at, you know, my, my full mug for a second. But, but let's bring Neil on here. All right. Neil, do you hear us? We, we don't see you. We don't hear you. But I see your nice little Zoom name that, that indicates to me that you are here with us today to talk some stocks. Uh, you got to turn my video on. I have to turn your video on? Yeah, it says that you stopped it. Well, this is very what? demanding for me. You're trying to, trying to sabotage this. How, how do I turn your pizza video on? Pizza rolls. Mom, pizza rolls. Hot pockets are fine. That's fine. Two. I want two with ranch. Thank you. Love you. The video, you guys. How do I turn on your video, Nielski? Okay. How long has this guy been using Zoom? 
and doesn't know it. You know, we had Zoom before About there was a, a global pandemic. Uh, yeah, I don't use that. Still not figured out how to how to turn. You don't use video. I'm a face uh, guy, Neil. You know, I just like to go to my meetings. Why don't you click participants and then go to more over my name and promote me to co-host or host? And that should give me the privileges that we need to make this work for our lovely and beloved All right. viewers. Neil, you are officially readers. a co-host. You got promoted here. Guys, it's great to be back in front of a camera with all of my adoring fans. Uh, <clears throat> JK, I know you guys are a bunch of scumbags and you probably hate me, but that's okay. It's mutual. Um, let's get talking about a really good stock that will benefit all of us, whether we like each other or not. I'm really interested, Luke, right now in an ETF, which I think- Yeah, we, think we need free- stock picks. We need stock picks. I was boring, right? We, we First, all that we've talked about so far is news- but let's give the people what they want, which is stock picks. I see some tickers in the chat too. So we'll get to those in a second, but, but give us a pick hit, hit us with, with a hard pick. All right. Really, really quick and easy. It's an ETF. A R K K arc. Yeah. It's uh, by arc innovation or arc invest rather it's run by Kathy wood. Um, this thing is awesome. Um, what I love about the stock is number one, um, I'm always trying to find tech. I rode, I rode the big blue chip tech companies up a lot in my investment account. And I'm not here to talk about trading and just having fun because I have a hybrid portfolio where I let smart people like Kathy Wood and Tim Cook run up uh, uh, the, the percentage growth of my portfolio. And then I trade and trade options and stuff like that to have fun on the side and learn about the markets. Um, but in reality, we're here to make money consistently over time. So um, I really like tech for that. Uh, when we're looking at innovative companies, disrupting the way that uh, consumers do things, making their lives better, those are the companies that are going to turn into the giants of tomorrow, the giants of the next year or five years. Um, and I think Kathy Wood, Wood has done a really good job with this portfolio. If we take a look at the holdings, you can see it's heavy Tesla. All right. All of the Tesla 10%. Q. Yeah, I got the holdings up. Yep. So so Tesla Q folks from about a year or two years ago, how are you feeling now? I would love to, to get you in a, in a room with, with uh, Kathy Wood here um, because she has been so bullish on the stock. And, and I, uh, the belief here is that, that Tesla is going beyond just vehicles. Anyone that's competing with her in the automobile space Tesla is or with with Tesla. Tesla is not competing with you on auto. Tesla yeah. has much bigger vision. Um, this is about disruption. Yeah, and and if you don't know we... Kathy Wood, the, the woman who runs this ETF, you need to look her up. I mean, she was bullish on Tesla before it was cool to be bullish on Tesla. I mean, yeah. she, she, she's been a long time believer in a lot of the stocks that we see here that are winners. Yep, absolutely. And and I mean, that's part of, you know, we're, we're attracted to, to great CEOs. Um, I'm attracted to great uh, portfolio managers. Um, so Kathy Wood is doing a great job on this. We look at the performance. Um, Luke, if you actually want to go to the site for the ETF on that tab that you have there to the left. Yep, I got it. Yeah. And then scroll down a little bit. You'll see a table for performance. Um, right, since cool. inception, we have a very solid, healthy 31%. But just look at it over time. Look at how this thing has fared. Take a look at the one year. I mean, that's doubling your money over a one year period. And we'd love to see that. She's done a great job managing this portfolio through COVID, turning that into an opportunity um, and sticking to her guns on her belief that these disruptive tech companies are still the future. We might be running out of uh, steam, running out of a little bit of gas with the big fang companies. Sure. But that doesn't mean that tech isn't driving innovation. Doesn't mean that tech is not the future. Um, So a great ETF for you guys to take a look at. Definitely do your uh, due diligence and take a look into ARK Invest and their uh, way of looking at what the future looks like. I think it's quite inspiring. And I just love this ETF. All right. I like it. We we get an ETF pick. First pick of the day, we we get an ETF pick. Uh, Everybody's watching out there. That, That should be enough. To, to give us a, a, a like and a subscribe. It, it helps us get this in front of more people. And I mean, we're, we're working for it. We got Neil on. We to, I told him to come on five minutes before. I said, Neil, you need to pitch something that you love right now. And, and there we go. I, can I, I leave like now? One. Can I be done? I mean, you, you can. You don't have to. 
Guys, I'll see You're you at the yourself. boot camp. On, I'm not enjoying myself at all. Uh, guys, I'll see you at the boot camp on November 10th. Make sure to give Luke a like and subscribe so he doesn't get all sad. Um, but I'll catch up with you again. November 10th boot camp is going to be a lot of fun. See you guys. All right. All right. There we go. We, we got our, our first special guest of the day. We, we got a pick. It is an ETF pick. ARKK. I'm going to take a look at that one. And, and going off, off of the, the ETF side of things that, that, that Neil brought up, um, you know, I, I've got my portfolio pulled back up onto the screen now. Um, and the way that I manage things is, is I'm definitely very ETF heavy, right? I, I, I allocate about 70% of my portfolio into ETFs. Uh, and then I use that, that remaining 30% or so to, to do my stock picking, right? I, I basically have the thesis that I, I can build a, a really inexpensive and a, a very complete portfolio by holding a basket of ETFs um, and then use that remaining 30% to try to get some alpha, right? That, that's where, where sort of I like to bring in the, the magic, the analysis. I mean, all the news and research that we have at Benzinga um, to, to go ahead and, and outperform the market. Like, like I'm just, we're just looking right now. I think this is an alphabetical order, my portfolio that we have up here. I mean, you know, we, we've got two ETFs on, on this first page, right? We, we've got one for Asia, AAXJ. Uh, we, we've got a commodity basket, DBC. I mean, we continue to scroll through. I mean, we'll see all these other ETFs we recognize. We got IWM, that's small caps. Uh, we got bonds, LQD. So again, the, the, the idea that I go with is, you know, use 70% of, of, of my funds for those ETF holdings, uh, and then use that remaining 30% to, to, to do the individual stock picking. And, and that's where the real fun comes in. Um, and, and we're gonna be cutting, bringing in Jason in just a second here. Uh, let, let me go ahead and, and stop sharing my screen again. Uh, Jason, ho hop on the stream with us. Uh, so, so Jason's gonna be, be coming in, in in just a few minutes here. Um, and he takes a very different approach for me um, in that he does a lot of the individual stock picking and he's had good success with it. Um, you know, I mean, he, he pulled up his portfolio last time. I mean, I like to say that, that mine looks pretty good. You know, if, if we look at those, those average returns, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm hitting pretty well on, on all those, those unrealized values. Um, but I'm doing it in a much smaller way, right? Whereas he takes conviction in stocks, uh, and, and allocates pretty heavily towards them. Um, and, and while we're giving Jason a minute to hop on here, I'm going to click over into the chat. Let, let's see what other tickers that we have. Uh, we got somebody asking about a spy pop. So, so spy that, as we all know, is the ETF for the S and P 500. So I'm going to go to my trusty Benzinga pro as I always do when I'm looking for news. Um, and let's see what's going on. We have news. Yes, we sure do. All right. So we have more talk of the week. We've got more stimulus talk. So it looks like we've got Nancy Pelosi saying she wants a deal before election. Okay, that's interesting, right? Again, for, for political reasons only, I would think that she would want to wait until after the election. Um, and she's saying that, that McConnell wants it after the election. So Pelosi saying she wants a deal before McConnell wants after we, we, we know that Trump wants a deal before the election. He said that Republicans will get behind him uh, uh, if there is a deal on the table. Um, so, so that's what caused the, the pop and spy there. If, if we move the chart over to a one day chart. Yeah, we see that nice green candle. We, 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 we got a couple point run. Um, all right. So some other tickers that we're seeing in the chat. Neo also winner for sure. I mean, Neo is a fan favorite. Um, I mean, that, that's been uh, uh, the, the hot stock, uh, one, one of the hot stocks of the year. Um, and something that, that, that I was talking to a, a colleague about a little bit ago um, is that the, the explosion in, in EV stocks that we have this year is, is crazy. I mean, it used to be like, like Tesla was the only game in town. And then we had all these SPAC deals. We had all these Chinese EV companies, et cetera. Um, and I mean, they, they, they've gotten just, just as much attention, almost as much attention, let's say, as Tesla, the, the main name in the house. Yeah. But look at this run in NEO. This, this is a one-year chart we have up. I mean, the stock went from a, a freaking dollar up to 28 bucks. So uh, if you were in that one, um, let's see, who was that? All right. Dapper Romeo, 
He's the Neo winner. You, you get the Benzinga round of applause today. There you go. If you were in that one for a long time, you, 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 you won there. Uh, another one that we're, that we're getting asked about is LCA. Uh, let's, what is this? Lancadia Holdings. All right. I'm, I'm not Jim Cramer, so, so I don't know every single stock. All right. So this one, it's, it's another SPAC stock. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, and zoom in on that down here. So, so they're a blank check company. Uh, you know, that they're, they're the ones that are doing all these acquisitions. If somebody knows what uh, LCA bought, drop it in the chat. It, teach us all a little bit, right? It, it's let, let's use this time that we have together, these 40 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it is, to, to make each other better traders. I mean, that, that's why we're tuning in. We're either bored or, or we want to get some stock ideas. Um, so go ahead and drop into the chat. What, what company is it that this LCA one is buying? We, we can tell that they announced a deal with somebody just by looking at the chart here, right? The stock was at, at 10 bucks, nice and flat as all these SPACs are. Boom, they announced a deal. The stock explodes to 13 bucks. Um, so, so, all right, we're going to be looking at sports betting. All right, it's a sports betting stock. They, all right, snap, snap, crackle, pop. He, he gets the MVP of the award of the day. You know, we had the NEO award. Now, now we got the LCA award. Um, so, so it's a sports betting, uh, uh, acquisition that they're doing. So, so this ticker LCA, the ticker will be changing within the next 30, 60 days or so. Uh, and it, and it will be a sports betting company, uh, golden nugget online gaming. That that's what it's called. We got to hopefully in there, uh, because you know, the, these deals are never guaranteed to go through. They're, they're likely, uh, I think, I think everybody's counting that they will go through. Um, but, but we don't know that for certainty yet. Um, all right. And, and I see we, we, we've got Jason on the stream here as well. Jason, I'm bringing you on. All right. We, I, I see your nice little zoom face here. Uh, I don't, I don't see your face. There it is. All right, everybody. Let's give a little round of applause. Let's throw a like on the YouTube. We got Benzinga CEO Jason Rasnick here with us. I, I think he wants to talk Tesla. It, it's a stock that he's been known to talk about, but but maybe he's got something else. You are you are live today. You are live and high energy, Luke. What what are you drinking over there? Can I get some of that? Yeah. So so we we don't have sponsors for this segment yet, but uh, if, how do we get sponsors? If Rockstar Energy, if you're out there, Rockstar, you want to sponsor this? Uh, you know, I'll I'll drink these every day. Or I can hold up my NASDAQ cup and get Brandon, Brandon Tepper. I'm going to send Brandon Tepper a little uh, link right now. But that's a, a good call. And I know we're going to talk Tesla. We're going to talk Tesla. Just give give me a minute. I want to get some NASDAQ people in here to come watch us. Maybe they'll see. Here you can Wait, hold on. Come watch now. What's okay. So, Luke, how, how is it going in here? I mean, it's, it's going pretty well. We, we, we have... Uh, the thing that, that I love about this, we, we did this Monday, we're doing it again today, uh, is the, the chat that we have going. I mean, it's awesome, right? We, we, we've got people just, just chatting in there uh, and helping each other out, right? Like I, I said just a second ago, people are either here because they're bored or, or they want to get stock ideas. They, they want to talk to other traders, see what other people are watching. And we've got that active chat. So I would say yeah. things are flying. Yeah, and today we got I, I got a special guest coming on in about seven minutes. Options Mike, he's an options trader. He was one of the most um, at, at one of our boot camps. He's one of the most liked guys. He's an options expert, um, widely followed, and he'll give you some good option trades. I may ask him how I take, take another long position in Tesla. But yes, Tesla has earnings tonight, and we will go to Tesla in a second. But today has been an interesting day in the market. I mean, I. Um, some of my big games, lithium. You guys, I've owned lithium since $4. That's LTHM, if you want to show the chart. I know I showed my um, my brokerage account yesterday, but I don't know. Um, I know you're, you're sharing right now. So, yeah, look at that. It says 10. It's a, I, think it's a, I think it's at. But you have LTHM? That's not LTHM. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. Yeah. LTHM. So, this is a one yeah, year so, chart we have. So you're, but is that it's right now on my screen? I'm seeing eleven dollars. Okay, but um, we're at ten so, ninety nine. I mean, Jesus. All right. All right. Good point. <laughs> so I, I originally bought this stock at twelve dollars because my friend Joel Alconan gave it to me and another guy, and then it kept going lower, and I bought it down to four bucks, and I own about twenty calls on this stock. Um, maybe I'll sell some today. But lithium what, is. What's your strike price? Oh, my calls, I got a strike of $10. I got All a right. strike You're of $10. You're in the money. You're yeah, in the money. Yeah, and I bet yes. you did not pay much for those calls. 
No, my cost, my, my price paid is 55 cents and they're trading at 185 today. There you go. That's the power yeah. of options. I mean, I mean, I can change the portfolio view to the biggest gains. Yeah, lithium. Well, that's not the biggest gains. Let's do this way. Okay, so yeah, lithium at yeah, 27% and oh, that's a day change. And we want the total change on the option. You there want to we unrealized. go. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Zoom is my biggest, the third biggest gain. Um, yeah, lithium is up 237% since I bought it. SPH, you know, I'm still buying these propane things. I sold a little bit of my SPH today. Um, you know, you're going to be out at uh, restaurants need propane more than ever. I mean, you're eating outside. Homes need propane. I don't know what suburban propanes their makeup of retail versus, um, you know, industrial, but I, I don't think you can go wrong. The demand is way, 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 way higher than what it was, you know, a year ago for propane. It, it is just, I mean, look, this is the same trade guys. I, I, I'm like a broken record. This is the same freaking trade as buying Whirlpool or Generac during Corona. It's the same thing. People don't want to go out and Whirlpool. They're buying dishwashers, propane. So I bought SPH as a play on that. So, you know, I'm hoping to see a 20 um, handle on that thing soon. I'm not at this point. There's been some selling, um, but I haven't gotten rid of my position. So it's up since we bought it on the pre-market show. What's our percentage on Suburban? It is, well, the options are up 120%. This, the regular stock is up 9%, 10%. So that's one another position. Okay, and now- And what's the time horizon for this? Are, are we hanging out till, till roughly earnings, you're thinking? Roughly earnings. I don't see it on your page there for the earnings. Um, I did not Jeez. see it on your page, but um, we've got an estimated earnings date of November twelfth. So what is that? It's a couple weeks. Yes, we got we got a uh, um, we got some we got a couple weeks. We got some time. Um, okay, so there you go on that one. Yes, I see you, Mitch, on the Raz alert. So now, Luke, do you have to go? Because I know you have to. So Luke is closing deals at Benzinga. If you ever want to see the inside workings of a financial media data company, let us know in the chat and maybe we'll show some of that as well. Um, right now, you know, we're showing you some trades, but there's a lot more that goes on. Our company has, you know, grown by 50, 60, 70% a year the past few years. Um, and we're hiring. If you're passionate about the markets and think you can impact the outcome and have ideas and your idea is just in your head and you want to actually execute on it, we're a place for that. We're a place for that. Um, so keep, keep that in mind. Um, what's going on with Zoom? It's dropped so much. Oh, come on. Zoom's dropped so much. Zoom was at five, like 15 out to 518. I, what's Zoom at right now? I can't, I mean, Zoom is the, the stock that just go, goes up and can't go down. 527, yeah. I mean, the stock has gone up from 390 to 530 in three weeks. Um, I don't know. Like I own Zoom since $64, but I sold some Zoom at 390. And, I sold and, and what, what you really should get credit for is you picked the right Zoom stock. I, I've talked to a lot of people who thought they were buying Zoom. They thought they were buying the, 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 the platform we're on now for video streaming and they're buying the wrong Zoom. So, so you know, yeah, you get yeah. the, the, the trader of the day award there. Thank you. Yeah, I bought Zoom and I should have obviously bought more. I should have put my whole portfolio in Zoom. I got someone else in Zoom at the IPO and put a lot of money in. The guy made a lot more than me, but I've owned Zoom since 60. I sold, I sold a, a third of the shares uh, two weeks ago at 390 and I kept the other two thirds. Um, I don't know if that helps you and I'm, keep, I'm staying long my, my two thirds. Um, okay. So is anyone making trades today in the chat? Let's go. Oh, Luke, do you have to go? Cause yeah, I, I, I got to hop I, off guys. What do you got? Why are you hopping off? Let's just get some I, color I, on this. I, I, I've got to go make us some money. I, I love trading stocks. I could talk about stocks all day. Uh, you know, but I've got to go talk to a brokerage. There's a lot of brokerages that are powered by Benzinga content. I mean, we are the only news source for them. Uh, so I got to go do my brokerage check-ins. All right. And if you, okay. Speaking of that, Luke, you can hang up. If you guys have a brokerage account, if you send your brokerage that we want to see more Benzinga news or why is it moving send me a screenshot to Jason at Benzinga.com. I'll send you a t-shirt. Just include our, your size and your address. And the t-shirt will be this t-shirt. Hold on guys. Hold on home gamers. All right, here we go. This is the t-shirt you'll get. It's the Benzinga Detroit shirt. I don't know if you can see it, but if you, you know, we're, a t we're powered out of Detroit, Michigan, and we grow by the power of um, the users, you know? So if you shoot me an email, jason at benzinga.com, 
I will make sure that happens. Cool. And I just dropped in. If anybody wants to check out the Benzinga Pro platform, that, that's the news and data terminal I was sharing to pull up stocks, look at that spy news that we had coming in in real time. Uh, uh, VIP accounts at Benzinga.com. Send an email there. We will get you hooked up. But all right, guys, until next time, I got, I got to hop. Good luck, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Like I said, we're going to have options. Mike come out, come out in a minute. He should be standing by. I don't see him coming in yet. Says, but um, he's in here, but he'll be standing by in a minute. I said 12, four. Oh, so he has a minute. Okay. So two, two things. Uh, one of the stocks I told you guys I was buying the past couple of weeks is Cure Leaf, C-U-R-L-F, C-U-R-L-F. That is cannab a cannabis stock um, with New Jersey vote and going to likely vote yes on cannabis. I think it's one you just got to own. I bought a lot of it. I got to be honest. I bought a lot and I'm selling 10% of the position today. We're seeing a gain and I just, I'm, buy, I'm selling 10%. I don't know why I am, but it's up 11% in two days since we bought it for the, for the show. So I'm selling 10% of the position. Don't know why, but if the, mar if the market goes down, um, if the market goes down, it's a, it's a good way to protect yourself. That is the way that why I got it. Okay, so we got Mike. He's not sure how to get in. So I got to go right to Mike and help him with his ability here. Let's see what he's struggling with. Okay, I thought I sent him this link, but I guess I will again. Okay, I don't know. what. Maybe I didn't send it to him. All right, so yeah, Cureleaf. Look at cannabis. The other cannabis stock that I own is TRSSF. That's TerraSend. So T-R-S-S-F, that's another one. I like the management team. I like the business. They, they buy right. They, it's stock that I've owned and I'm going to continue to own it. Um, and uh, Mike, I just sent you this in your DM on Twitter. So if you ever want to chat with me on Twitter, I'm, I'm at Jason Raznick. That's my last name, R-A-Z-N-I-C-K. You can DM me and chat there. Um, okay, I see Michael. Pas okay, he's here. All right, so now he is here. So. I guess I did send it to him. Now I just got to make him, um, I got to bring him live. Let's go one second. One second, Mike. I will do it. A lot of talk. Here we go. Mike, you there? Mike, we, we see you. We don't hear you or see your video. Jason, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Yes. There you are. Yes. Yes. Okay. You got in. So Dude. did I not send you the link before? And I just sent it just now. Uh, Is that what happened? You sent me two and the, I, I hit the wrong one. That was on me. Ah, Michael, Michael, but that's okay. It's on me too. It's always, <laughs> hey guys, if you have any feedback for us, please send it along. So Michael, give a little quick 15 seconds, 20 seconds on your background and what you do and how you trade. Go Jason, ahead. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Um, I've been trading love since just after the financial crisis, got into options. And what I love specifically about options is they often show us what's going on in the market. They show us names that may be in play you didn't realize where the flow is going, where some big bets are being made. And specifically, it often shows a sentiment. You know, you could tell just in the overall market how they're playing with the ETFs and the VIX and stuff, where the mood of the market is and where we may or may not be going at that time. And then I use technicals and the news of the day from you guys to put it all together to come up with a day trading plan. Got it. Got it. How do you look at like your risk, risk and you know, do, do you use like, are you taking big gambles in the options market or how, how are you going about that? Um, honestly, the last couple of weeks I've been trading mostly uh, stock because of the just the nature of the market. And right now this market's kind of in this very choppy zone we've gotten into with everything going on in Washington. Uh, when I want options, I want the bigger names. I typically go further out of the money because you just don't need the same amount of them. You don't need to be close to the money on a name like Amazon anymore or Tesla. You know, you look at how far a name can move and like, you know, you were mentioning Tesla the implied move tonight is about 29 bucks for their earnings tonight. So that means if you're going to get paid, you know, you got to be at least. Wait, you, wait you, Mike, you, Mike, are you able to turn on video or no? Uh, I'm not seeing an option for it. I was looking for it. I would love to show okay. you my screens. Hold on. So yeah, because there, there's a lot of people in the thing saying, um, all right. So I said all panelists they're they're Yeah. They're getting mad at me. So, okay. Participants too. Guys, I'm doing this. This is you guys are seeing this live, and this is us learning how to do this. So I promote to panelist. Okay, Michael. Uh, all right, Mike. Can you do it now? Yes. Uh, all right. I didn't on. know I had to do share that. Share screen. And, and you could share your screen too, Mike. You can do both of those. There you go. Screens up. Wait, did you guys see it or no? It should come up right now. 
yeah, Luke had the same problem I did. Yep, there he is. There's a screen. All right, and the video up, or did I lose the video? I don't know. The video should go up, too. Uh, it's turned itself off. Okay, there it is, coming back up. You cannot start. You have stopped it. All right, you killed the video, which is not important. I have the screen up. I, didn't, I did not kill video. Uh, it's saying I can't start it. Really? Yeah. Let me try one more thing. Panelist. Oh, wait, wait. You're right. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The people love us rookies hear me. Okay, it says make host, make co-host. Um, making co-host. I'm making you co-host. Maybe that'll change it. There you go. We're back. Yes, you're good. We got Perfect. video, guys. Um, the we got video. See, this is like me being a rookie. But you had other guys. I told you we're trying this. If you guys want us to do this daily, we did our first one yesterday, and we had you know two thousand three. No, we had five thousand views on it, and right now we had one hundred fourteen people watching live. And if you guys hit the like button and subscribe, you'll get a lot more of this. And I'll bring on a lot of my friends that are way smarter than me and know the markets way better than I do. So go ahead, Mike. I'll shut up. That's all right. So first of all, this is my, my normal day trading screen. You can see I have my alerts coming up here in Thinkorswim and just a snapshot of the markets down below, right? On the five-minute chart and then a daily chart because I always want to know where we're going in the market. And for my members, because I'm sharing this all day long, you can see I'm pointing out the top flow of the day. So like right off the bat today, they were all over the Facebook, the 280 calls, and then the 285 calls. Snap, they were all over the weekly 35 and 36 calls. PayPal, the weekly 215 calls. And late this morning, they started just chasing after the Disney March 130 calls. And so, you know, trying to point out where the action is, where the best action is of the day. And that tells us what's going on. So if you come into a name like Disney, you can come in, and you say, well, what's going on, Mike and Disney? You can go out to those March calls, right? And you'll see that all the way out here now, somebody's been starting a position. Look look at these 30s, 14,000 of them now. You know, when this first started, they were coming in a couple hundred at a time. There's now 14,000 that are out there today versus open interest of 1,700. So somebody's building a position out there in Disney with earnings coming in a couple of weeks. So that's really interesting to me. Uh, I think somebody's expecting some very good numbers based upon Disney, uh, Netflix having issues and Disney gaining a lot of subscribers here as we come forward into the next uh, cycle. So, all so, on, I, go ahead. Wait, so on that Disney thing, so do you take a position then when you see that kind of movement? Uh, today, I, sometimes I do. Today, I haven't because I don't like the market set up today, Jason, to be honest with you. I don't like how the market's trading here right now where we're whipping back and forth on rumors and nothing but rumors and a little bit of news. But what I do when I like something is I note it. I write it down. It stays. You can see everything from the previous couple of days stays on this list for the previous week. And now I know if we so can wait, all on, the, clear, on this see, list. So you have a list, like a notes list. Yep. You see it sitting over here on the left side of my screen. Yep. Let me right. make my screen big. Yep. You see it. I want to show Bert that. Yeah. Yep. So it's not, you don't have a, a list based on stock. You just have an all around notes list. I like right, So like on Monday, okay, they were cool. hitting yep. the, the Baba weekly 315 calls, the go go November 14th. The, Twink, Hostess, December 15 calls. So I, I put Good. this out there yeah. so we can always see what's going on. This is the best flow of the day and the stuff that just stood out, the stuff that said, this is interesting to me. This is something I should be looking at. And if I'm not in it today or trading it today, I should be keeping my eyes on it moving forward. Got it. Got it. Yeah, because I'm so Disney is one of the ones I want to pick up. I have a little bit, you know, for the kids and stuff like that. I, I But I Disney is one of the ones that I keep looking at and I haven't bought more of it um so mitch mitch is talking about shorting pen what do you think they want to know what you think of DraftKings and pen um, first of all um i to start with DraftKings. i i made a fortune trading this thing this year on on this name i love it to death but i told all my members i can't even type today there we go um nope i told all my members into this when pen did their secondary to look out for a secondary from DraftKings because they hadn't raised money yet how they came public was through a reverse merger, right? So you knew they yes. had to come out and do it, an offering at some point to raise cash. And then I pointed out that you had a head and shoulders pattern that was forming on this, and then it now triggered. And to me here, you see the 50-day moving average, the purple line? Yeah. It really respects that. When it's above it, it's strong. When it's below it, it's weak, and it uses it as resistance and support. And okay. we sliced right through it here last week. And now we have a bear flag formation. So for me right now, there's no trade except maybe to short it or just to stay out of the way on this until it gives us a nice reversal signal, right? The nice thing about DraftKings is they love calls on it. When they want to be in it, they come screaming for it. You know, when they want to be in it, you see massive volume. Got Pen it. 
is a little bit better because uh, you have David uh, Davy Day Trader of uh, Barstool Sports. You know, he's just their spokesman. He's out there. So Penn is getting a lot more publicity in DraftKings. It's holding him better. But ultimately, if uh, you know the market continues to come in or we see this little bit of problem with gambling, I think you could look eventually for Penn to break if it breaks this level. It's got to take out this 62 area. And if it takes that out, then you can get a fall there. Got it. Got it. Okay. That was very, very helpful. I mean, like seeing the resistance thing. So I sold my DraftKings um, because I, the pen versus DraftKings valuation, I didn't like. So um, one of our guys, Chris Gotchi wrote a great article on it and I had some calls on DraftKings I sold, but I didn't short, but I, I, I thought what you, the break in the 50 day resistance. Oh, Bert David saw that note. That's awesome. So Bert David's uh, the man. He's one of the lead guys at Benzinga, et cetera. But going back to this thing with your talking pen DraftKings, you know, you knew the offering was coming. Sometimes though, sometimes though, when those offerings come and you think that you're smarter than the market and you sell, you're wrong and the market goes straight up. It happened with Tesla. Tesla did an offering. It dropped for that day or two, then took off. This is about like it's three months ago. Yep. So um, yeah. Now what's your take on Tesla? I think Tesla is a tough flight here. And I think part of the problem with Tesla is that we had this huge run up on just doing a, spl a stock split, right? which didn't really add any value to Tesla. It just made it better for us to trade, an easier name to trade than where it was up at 1400 plus uh, per share. Uh, you know, I think their production number is going to be good. I'm a little worried about, uh, honestly, their their earnings and, and their profitability here because I think they're pushing everything hard. They've been cutting prices to try to keep their edge on the market. So I'm a little worried that it just may not be enough to move the needle up this much. Uh, the one thing I would watch for, if they say anything about solar, solar has been a hot sector. We were just talking about this today and everybody kind of forgets, but, you know, Musk and Tesla, they bought his other company, Sol Solar City, and they've pretty much done very little with it from a revenue generating perspective. If they were to come out and say they were starting to ramp up Solar City and their tiles and the battery, that could be an interesting catalyst that we haven't seen yet on Tesla. So exactly. You're right on that solar thing. People are looking for it. So people have been talking about it too. So if they don't announce it, it could sell off. Now, I don't always trade Tesla right. I've gotten the long term. I bought it originally at 38 bucks. I got the long term turn trend right way long ago. I mean, I guess pre-split, I bought it, you know, way lower than that. But um, so the thing that I've been right on Tesla lately, and I'll tell you what happened. When battery day, battery day was coming up, my brother-in-law bought call options and I said, he's wrong. I said, it's going to sell off on battery day. So I bought puts the day of battery day before the battery day. And then towards the end of the market before it was closing, um, or I shorted the stock. I forget exactly what I bought puts or I shorted the stock. Elon Musk said in a, a, his little preview tweet, like, he's like, I really have a little surprise for you guys at the end. So I'm thinking that little surprise was, which would have been a ridiculous, amazing surprise. And the stock would have shot up was that they're going to, you know, the semis are going to start being distributed. That's what I thought, okay? But it, instead, it was the announcement of the Tesla Plaid, which is the $135,000 Tesla fastest car on the road. So it didn't do that. But I shorted Tesla for a good 20 minutes or a couple hours that day. I shorted it at like the low, like I basically, if I would have kept my, if I would have kept my conviction, I was right with what I was thinking, but I, I wimped out of my conviction. And I was like, when he said he has a little announcement at the end, I thought it was gonna be the semi and I was wrong. So I lost on my short, but what I was right on was I knew that the market was not going to respond positively to battery day. What, the reason why the reason was, and it was so obvious to me was people kept thinking there was going to be this battery that goes 500 miles or a million mile battery in the years of Tesla has been around. You guys have to remember Tesla has been around for several years, five years, I mean, long 10 years, but I'm saying, you know, mass producing cars, they've never increased the battery capacity that much. And there's a reason for it. If they did, they would kill the residuals of uh, of the other Teslas that are out there, the leases, the people that own cars, they'd, they'd be up in arms. So there's no way Tesla, even if they can right now release a thousand hour battery, they can't release it. They cannot because it will kill residuals. It'll kill the resale market. So on my trade with there, so the battery day went down and then I bought more shares and I still own those shares. Now for the all big earnings announcement, it's a gamble. I mean, earnings is a gamble. The stock Pure is- gamble. Yes, yeah, pure gamble. And so that's why I want I want to say that it's a pure gamble. Now, it could fall 40 points. Like so I should probably buy some puts as protection since I own a lot of Tesla. It's a lot of my portfolio. I went I bought some more stock in it today, but I um I may buy a few puts. I personally think Tesla is going to have amazing numbers today, like truly amazing numbers. I think it's going to be way stronger than what people think. 
Um, the Model Y is the most unbelievable car that I've ever been in. And it, like, it's a, it's a, it's a game changing car, not just because the utility of it and the use of it, the margins on it are so much higher than any other car maker. And, and, and everyone likes to talk about the competition, but the competition has, you know, entrenched dealerships that make money on service. Well, with electric cars, you rarely get service unless you have a, a faulty one, which does, which does happen. So I am believing that Tesla will be, my call is Tesla will be higher after earnings than it is today before we, before earnings. That is my belief. Okay. Well, so if you believe that, then it's expected move is about 30 bucks. And I would look out at the 460 to 470 calls for this week. Probably go with the 470s, just a little cheaper. Remember, so you would, so you would, would buy the 470s to expire this Friday, or give it more time? What, what uh, would you I do? mean, it depends upon you how much premium you want to risk, right? And this is what the old question always comes down to: is how much do you want to put at risk? If it's a lotto style, I would do weekly. So if I was doing a lotto, I would do what I'm willing to lose. If I wake up on tomorrow morning and my option is zero, I'm okay with it. Does that make sense? Got, right. it. Um, got it. If it's not a lotto style, then you should go out in time, right? But got overall, it. you got to look at the market. The market's saying, I don't know what I want to do. I would look out there. I would avoid higher premiums. And that's the mistake everybody makes. On earnings, they like to play these higher premium names. Well, guess what happens? Before they could do a thing, the IV drains out. And when the IV drains out, your option goes down 50% before you can even make your first trade to get out of it that morning. Got it. Got it. So that's, so if I want this, so the, and it's cheaper, if I just do the expiration for this Friday, it's cheaper for me. And if I do one for November, it's going to be more expensive. Well, that's exactly it. If you go out to November, right, you have what, 40, 30 days of premium built into that one. So we go out to our November strike here and you can see if I say, okay, well, God, I, I do hate things for swim option chains sometimes. They are the worst. Uh, hey, hey, Mike, I'm getting blasted in the chat. He, Chris K Kuyperman says, Jason, you talk nonstop for five minutes. Interview the guy, please. Jason, <laughs> if you're going to have a, a guest, give him a chance to speak. Yeah, Chris, totally agree, especially when Mike is way smarter than me on this stuff. I want him to speak. He's actually giving me a specific trade that I'm going to put on before Tesla earnings. So that's why I am conversing with him. Prior, he was giving his trades and I didn't talk. So Appreciate keep going it, on guys. that. Yeah. But they, if you're yeah, going to get to November, thank you for the feedback. The number yep. 470s, you're going to pay 21 bucks. Now, that's a lot of premium risk if you're wrong, right? Yeah, One contract, you're paying $2,100. If you're wrong, that may never come back, right? Let's say for whatever reason, Tesla's EPS is, are, is just horrific, right? They have huge costs, everything with the virus here. Then, you know, you're not going to get that back likely in 30 days. So that's why if you're going to take a chance, I would do lottos on weeklies. Something I would be okay if I woke up tomorrow and there were zero, I would say, okay, I lost. Personally, Got I it. don't play earnings anymore because I think it's a zero-sum game. Like you said, it's a pure gamble. Uh, I play with stock after hours or the next morning I'll play it when they open. Like today I was playing with Snap and I played with Snap last night. So, so, so got it. So, so just one more thing. We'll go to Snap in a second, but just one more thing on that Tesla thing. So if, there, if I do November, I'm paying an extra $20 to get that. And if, if, this, and if the stock gets hit hard, I'm going to lose on that anyways. If I buy a Tesla call today to expire this Friday, how much is that? Uh, it was about three ninety. Three dollars and ninety cents first twenty one dollars. Got it. And that's just one naked call or whatever, right. buying it or so okay, all right, I may go for this. Three ninety. I'm yeah. gonna or you I'm know, gonna, the other thing is you could do a spread to limit your risk. Is that too complicated for a amateur option guy like myself? Yes. Amateur okay. options guys is a little complicated, but you know, you can do a call spread, it would limit the risk. Okay. One more question on this Tesla thing. One more question. Um, you know. And Snap, Crackle, Pop, we'll, we'll deal with your thing in a, in a few minutes. I, I'm seeing what you're saying. But one more question. If I want to buy some protection, let's say I own, you know, 1,000 shares of Tesla. I want to buy – I don't want to hedge it perfectly. I just want to hedge 10% of the position. Would you buy puts, like, for tonight then? And that, if, I was would willing to, if I was willing to be called away, I would sell calls against my stock. Got so it. So if I had it, I would go out and I would go to November. And if I was willing to get called away at 460 or 470, I would sell those calls against my stock instead. So if I had uh, if I had 100 shares, I'd sell one contract. If I had 500 shares, I'd sell five contracts. And the way that works is I collect the premium. So yep. I would collect one time, so 460, so I would collect $4,600. Well, let's, let's say we did the Novembers. I, when I sell premium, I tend to go out in time. So if okay. I did the Novembers and I would take in $2,100 per contract. So if I had 100 shares, I would take in that $2,100 at the end of the day, if Tesla is above 470, 
by expiration date, November expiration. I keep the $2,100. I get paid 470 bucks for my Tesla and the, my, my stock's gone. If Tesla's yeah. below it, I keep the $2,100 and I keep my stock. And I can always, always shut my close, buy my options back at any point in time for a profit or for a loss. That's up to me. Yeah, will, they be, will, it, will it usually be for a profit if it's below 470 or will be, oh, it just depends. It depends, it depends. how below. That's depends why. where it is and when where, where it is and when. Okay, got it. All right, now we're going to go to Snap in one second. Before we go to Snap, yes, we've been, so we wrote an article about um, this uh, merchandise that was purchased. This uh, uh, Chris Camilla bought, um, what is it again? They bought, so look up CLCT right now, um, the Pokemon cards. So we wrote, we broke this article that Chris, you know, paid the highest three hundred seven thousand dollars for Pokemon cards. CLCT has been moving a big, uh, you know, it's for collectibles. People at home are doing a lot more collectible stuff. How, how does this one look to you? CLCT, you got so many lines there. I don't know which line to look at. Jeez. <laughs> uh, here, CLCT. I mean, this is a to me, this is an investment. This is not a tradable name. It doesn't do a million shares a day. It does a couple hundred thousand shares. So me, this is nothing but an investment. You have to know more about it on a fundamental level. Uh, for, you know, nice trend, right? Look at this uptrend. You see the blue line? That's the eight-day moving average. It's basically riding that. As long as it stays above that, I'd stick with it. Uh, hard to chase it up here at 65, a big trend up. But you can notice the red line, the 21-day has been support. So if you got a dip to the 21-day and we held, I'd rather buy it there than chase it up here. Got it. And guys, options, Mike, this is options, Mike, on Twitter. Isn't it options, Mike? Is that right? Yep. Okay. So options, Mike, he's on Twitter. He, he's, as you can tell, knows his shit. Now let's, you mentioned that you paid, you traded snap after hours last night. Yep. Um, and let's talk about that one. I know before you were on Mike, Luke Jacoby here bought snap at 13 bucks and he's been in it since then. And he's, he's been right. I've been not in it and I guess wrong. So. Let's hear about your trade last night. Well, for, for me, I, I didn't, I, you know, I, first of all, full disclosure, Snap has been one of these names that's gotten me over and over and over again. I have not traded it in forever. So this marks the first time in 24 hours I traded it twice for the first time in maybe five months. You know, when a name constantly gets you, you just stop trading it for a while until you figure it out. But when that report came in and they said a the EPS of one penny when they're expecting a loss, I'm like, you know, I just grabbed some shares and, you know, made some money, got out and continued going higher after hours. And this morning, you know, I took another quick trade on it into this area when it's tried to break out. And then the real trade, which I, I missed, was when it broke the opening five minute candle. That was when the really trade should have happened today. You see that steady stream up, this massive call buying coming in on it. Uh, I didn't have a great day on it. I'm being very careful here in this market, guys. And I can't stress that enough. There's times when you want to trade hard aggressively and just stick with things. I don't trust this market right now. I don't like the way it's trading this week. So, you know, I make some money, put some money in my pocket, and I'm content to sit there and wait until better action. Yeah, I, it's weird. I'm my, I before the show today, and I, I, I live traded yesterday on this thing, but um, I've been selling some stuff off. I, I went on margin a little bit, and I was way too margin. So I've been selling some gainers. I, I bought, I sold the container store. I sold a few other things, and I'm I'm continuing to, you know, my cure relief, which I do like for the you know election because New Jersey, I sold a little bit off. It went up 12% in two weeks, like or less than that. I'm selling a little bit off and I think it'll go up 30%. I just um, I just think it's like you said, rather sleep well at night, I guess. I mean, I, I, I do get the FOMO though. I get the FOMO, you know, like if Tesla's at $500 tomorrow morning, I'll, I'll FOMO. <laughs> you know, you can, we get it, but you know, you look at the market and again, look at this action. You know, I have this line drawn here on the SPY at 342.50 because it's been the spot of since we sold off, you can see all the tails and wicks and opens and closes on this spot. It's telling us, this market's telling, this is an important spot. You have a downtrend, you have a cup and handle, we all see it. And you just gotta be patient now and wait for the market to say it's ready. Wait for the market to say, I'm ready to move. Cause right now this is choppy. And if you look at it on the five minute chart, it's even nastier. You know, you, you just can't stay in stuff here and hope it's gonna come back. So when, So then what would you want that chart to look like to change your opinion? I wanted to take out this downtrend and do it with power. We keep playing with it. You can see here on a five minute chart, we keep coming into it here. And you want it to take out, and this is a descending chart channel here at 347 currently today. You take that out and that would indicate to me that we're coming out of this consolidation phase and we're pushing back up. Got it. Okay, before Mike will do maybe one more stock, before we do that, if you're on, if you're on the, if you're watching and you're new here, we, we want us to continue to do these daily, 
please like and subscribe. It's on YouTube. Like and subscribe. And if you're, you know, have a Twitter account, please go to Options Mike and follow him as well. He's the man. But like and subscribe. We have 160 people watching live. But if you like and subscribe, those YouTube algorithms like find us, I guess, somehow. I don't really know how it works. I just sit here back behind Benzinga. Um, but yeah, we'd really appreciate that. Now, Mike, you can pick any other stock that you want to or something you want to go over. Yeah, I'm going to bring stay with social media today just because of the way things are going. And I want to point out Twitter and I love Twitter and I, I've owned this thing since in the 20s. Um, You're the man. You stayed with it. I, I, I'm down to a couple hundred shares. I was thousands of shares at one point. And I've been trimming them as I go along. But what's important today is you look at a monthly chart is we have now taken back the first month IPO high. And that is an important stop for a stock that's been consolidating. I mean, I was I owned it down here in the 13s, and then I bought it back and sold it and done this over and over. This is important. Now, if you know they have earnings coming, if they deliver on earnings, this could be the next one to start to move again. And you know, I'm not telling you to go buy it today. I'm telling you to watch this name today. Typically, when a stock starts taking back its IPO high after a long period of time, look at Facebook. Look at these other companies that have done this right. Facebook, we did the same thing. You remember Facebook, we had this huge lang language. Then when it finally took out that opening IPO high, it went off to the races. So you want to keep an eye on this one. If you like Twitter uh, and you like social media, you know, I would keep my eyes on that one. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I like it's like when you see it, like I'm mad I'm not in Twitter like I should be. And it's one of those things I think. I mean, I'm seeing myself using Twitter more. I mean, I don't, you, we talked about this a few days ago, but we don't, I don't use Facebook. I really don't. I use Twitter and uh, Instagram, but I'm trying to get use less of Instagram. You know, it's like, I don't know. So Twitter's, it's a good call. So, so you're not selling. I know you just have a couple hundred shares, but you're not selling at this point. No, uh, I was at full disclosure. At one point I was over 3000 shares in it. Wow. So I've been just, you know, trimming them all the way up and uh, I think I'm down to about four or 500 here and, I'm going to hold it through earnings. And if it pops up above 60, I'll probably take some more and then let the rest try to run and see if I can get a real big move. Yeah. Um, okay. That's interesting. So you're not going to let it run for now. And then um, I'm going to, I, I, by the way, I'm, I know we're live, but I'm going to call you. I mean, if you don't answer then I'm going to call you tonight about that thing I met, messaged you about sure. um, a while ago. We're ready on our side. So we'll see you on your side, but no, thank you for coming on. We should do this more often. Um, but it, you know, love hearing your options. I'll let you know how I turn out of my, what option trade I end up doing for Tesla. I'm going to do something. Oh, and you said you would sell the calls. You wouldn't buy puts. See, I, I thought I'd buy like 10, like a few puts as protection. That's the easy way. If, but you're saying if you, if I own that stock in such size, selling the calls may act better for me. As long as you're willing to be called away. As long as you're one. Yep. Yeah. And, and when I have a stock position, I'm always willing to be called away. Got it. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Now, I guess you're going to have to Jason. change it. Yep. Have a good one. Talk to you guys later. Give Mike a round of applause and follow him on Twitter, guys. Thank you. Talk Bye -bye. to you guys soon. Uh, get, guys, that was Options Mike. He's the man. He's on Twitter. Um, give him a follow. Good guy. Showing you charts, showing you everything. Now, we'll bring on other people. If you guys mention it or – and I'm talking like Kathy Wood I have on November 4th, I think it is. I got to double check the date. Um, there's uh, a bunch of people that, you know, I could bring on, you name the person, um, I can get, I can bring them on. So, um, Gary Kaminsky just tweeted, DM me to, I'm just looking at some of the people I have here. If you guys want retail sales, cannabis CEOs, just let me know. We can bring them on. It's just a question of what you want or how you see it playing out. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I think, you know, we're supposed to end at one or it's already one ten. So I think we're going to head out today, but you know, we got Tesla earnings, at, you know, after the bell, I always listen to the conference call with, with Elon Musk because that's where the real action happens. So even if the numbers come out and they're not great, the real action happens on the conference call. You may maybe a Tesla semi coming out. It could be whatever, but Tesla action happens on the conference call. So be careful when you're trading this stock. Trust me, I am now. Again, if I, if I treated Tesla like a quarterly trade, I wouldn't be owning it. I mean, I bought it again five years ago and I never, I mean, I sold a few of those shares. So just be careful. Don't just trade it for that moment, but it could get, be a lot of action either way. If it sells off a lot, then I'll use it as a buying opportunity. That's, that's the action. So if you ask me tomorrow what I did, if it sells off a lot, the answer is I bought more shares. If it goes up, I may, if I bought some calls, I may sell those. But um, beyond that, 
I'm just hanging in there, looking forward to it. And if you guys want to see this stuff in real time, Benzinga Pro will have this stuff in real time. It's a sweet platform. There's no ads. It's You can chat with in the chat room. It's pro.benzinga.com. And um, yeah, CJ Bush, Mike is awesome. And uh, please like and subscribe if you want to you know, see this again. Turn on your alerts for us so you're alerted when we go live because that's the issue. You're not always alerted to that. And um, and you can follow us on um, Twitter at twitter.com slash Benzinga. I don't know how to hyperlink that stuff. I'll have to like, get Mitch to show me how to do that because um, I'm sure there's easy ways to do it, but I don't know how. So sorry that you have to copy and paste because I think that's annoying, but that's just what it is. Oh, that worked. So here we go. I'll just do this. Ready? Lunch, Twitter. And then go to Benzinga. Read some of our content. Give us feedback. What, whatever you guys want to see, let us know, and we'll try to improve it for you guys. Thanks again, and we'll be hopefully back with you guys tomorrow. If you enjoy this, if you enjoy this, the way we judge for you know coming back and you want people is if the numbers of subscribers increase. Um, and um, you can always shoot me an email at jason at benzinga.com with your feedback on how this can be better. Bullet points are easier for me to read. Um, thank you, Snap Crackle Pop. I did. I got it. All right, guys. Have a great day. Make some money. Be careful. And don't just go for the quick buck. Okay? Talk to you guys soon. Yep. Goodbye. It related to Bob Pisani. I should have asked him that question too. I had that. I thought about that right away. Climbing. All right. Now I got to figure out how to log this off. Turn the zoom off. Turn this off.